this kid who kept on riding by my house on a Saturday and would just like hurl insults at me. And like, go back to your country, black and knees. I literally was just like, did I do something to this kid? Was it a Monday or Tuesday the following week? This is after like lunchtime when it was about to end. He pulls up to me and says, like, what a black boy. And I was having a bad day already. First of all, you harassed me all weekend. And then at school, you're harassing me. And I was in a fighter back then, but I was just fed up. He pushed me and I remember just wailing on them. Just threw him to his cable and beat his ass. I was crying the whole time, just beating him up. Yeah, he never did that again after that. Adesanya is now the face of the sport. He is now, as of today, the biggest star in the sport. Let me tell you something. When a star like Israel Adesanya says he wants something, he usually gets it. After my UFC debut, I stole the show. Cameras. And so I get pulled in so many different directions. And it's just like, I don't like being famous. I think I want to be more. I don't know if it's my ego or I'm selfish or what it is, but I know when it's all said and done, when I'm dead, my name will be remembered in history. Widely regarded as one of the best strikers in mixed martial arts. In my opinion, probably the very best in the sport at setting traps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's so clever. He'll, he'll like gauge you, see what you're doing, then he'll mm -hmm. switch stances. He was so high level as a kickboxer. Mm -hmm. He's so clever. Israel Adesanya has accomplished worldly achievements within his UFC career. Quote from Ali makes sense to me now. Like, I'm the greatest. I said it before I knew I was. Born on July 22nd, 1989, in Lagos, Nigeria, he was the son of Aluafemi Adesanya, an accountant. I get well looked after, like financially, because I have one of the smartest men I know with money behind me, and that's my father. He is helping me learn how to flip my money the right way. And Taiwo Adesanya, a nurse. He's also the eldest of five children. Yeah, I had a good growing up. Lovely family, lovely parents, you know. Israel attended Christland School in Nigeria for his primary education. He enrolled in its Taekwondo after school club. I started in Taekwondo when I was a kid, just because after school programs and it was fun. Until his mother removed him for being too rowdy and getting an injury. Then my mom kind of pulled me out because I was just wrecking shop around the house, mm -hmm. kicking everything. I broke my arm doing backflips off the couch. Oh, and Jesus. she was just like, nah, no more. That brought me back to when it started that we didn't even know about it and we said, oh, no, no, it's too dangerous, you can't do that. Israel's parents are massive UFC fans now, but back then, his future could have taken a very different turn. As African parents, we are professionals. Uh, we wouldn't ordinarily accept that our child should be a fighter. We feel blessed to have him as a child. What is it about Nigerians? Mm. There's a work ethic, but there's also a cleverness to Nigerians. I've said it before, I'm the runt of my people, brain-wise, body-wise. There's something about the genetics of our people. It's a warrior race. My people are different, man, honestly, and I'm, I'm like, you've seen it. I'm telling you, once the Africans, once they start stepping in, they're gonna run the game for a long time. For a long time. After his primary school education, Israel enrolled at the Bell's secondary school. Unfortunately, this didn't last very long, as at age 10, his family relocated to Ghana for 10 months. What was the reason why your parents decided to take you out of Nigeria and move you to another country? I think it was um, initially better recognized tertiary education. Constantly being the new kid was tough for Israel, as it would be any kid. I had toys and stuff as a kid. It was a certain age, my dad was kind of like, right, you know, academics is number one now. Fuck all this play shit, all this toy shit. So my dad didn't believe in toys, he believed in books. Perhaps this constant sense of unfamiliarity is what made him strive under pressure in his early MMA days. Pressure makes diamonds, and I'm used to that. You see me, I'm shiny right now. 
As time went on, his parents weren't comfortable with the level of education. They moved to New Zealand and settled in Rotorua in 1999. Do you like New Zealand? Do you enjoy I love New living Zealand, there? Man. Like, there was a time I was driving down from Auckland to Wanganui, rapping, singing, just having fun, and I was just looking at the landscape, and that was the moment I decided that this is where I'm going to stay. This is the country I'm going to live in. Because my gym's over there, my team's over there, Eugene's over there, my family. I've, I've made friends there, I've grown up there, it's my, it's my other country, you know, so I love it over there. I love the vibe as well. Kiwis, we love a good one out, you know what I mean? We love a good fight. This is part of the culture. If a fight broke out right now, what would you all do? You would ignore me and watch the fight. It's in our DNA. Israel got bullied during his high school years, and he said, it was weird being the only black kid around. Culture shock mostly was realizing that being black was a problem, you know, especially in a small town. I was like, what? Like, why? Like, you know, people would just try and be mean to you for no reason. And I was like, because it happened in school back home as well, but it wasn't because of my skin color. I had to defend myself a lot. I'm cheeky. I'm annoying. <laughs> so I'd always get myself into trouble. And eventually, I had to learn how to defend myself. That's when my search for fighting came through. It turns out that the mistreatment he experienced from being bullied gave rise to his decision to pursue martial arts later in life. Israel wasn't really into sports in high school. I'm big and black. I don't play basketball. I'm from Nigeria. I don't play soccer. Mm -hmm. New Zealand, I don't play rugby. I just somehow learned oh, I'm pretty good at kicking ass. And yeah, here I am. Then what got his attention were Japanese anime, such as Death Note and Naruto. What is this anime series, Naruto? It's a famous anime worldwide. And I got into it by watching the Rock Lee versus Gara fight. The story of Naruto in particular was one of his favorites, and he had drawn strength from the fictional Japanese ninja and turned it into the fuel that drives his UFC record. I've played a part in the rise of anime and sports over the last few years. And his love for animes has impacted his fighting style from the moment he enters the octagon to when he calls his opponents closer, it's clear that the fictional has found its way into Adesanya's reality. I did the stance Rock Lee normally does in the weigh-ins, and Anderson stood there like Gara. He probably doesn't even know what that is, but he just stood there like this. It's just like life imitates art without even trying. Even if some sequences are still to be refined. I've been drilling these for a long time. These are not fake hand signs. It's just me expressing myself. It's just flavoring. His nickname, The Last Style Bender, refers to an anime-influenced cartoon series, Avatar, The Last Airbender, in which certain characters can manipulate the classical elements. But the nickname is just one part of the act. I came in there, smoke bomb, boom, ninja run. Israel regularly mentions series, episodes, and characters in his pre-fight press conferences. You fuck with Naruto? Fuck yeah, I'm there. I like your ninja way. To the point of even replicating particular stylistic moves, poses, and stunts in his fight routine. He even has the image of one of the show's main characters, Toph by Fong, tattooed on his forearm. That's a great idea! Whether as an adult or as a 10-year-old kid, Israel has considered the world of Japanese anime and cartoons to be anything but a passing obsession. This was even more serious when he was a kid, as it became a dream for him. He even says after he retires from the UFC, his next endeavor will be to create an animation company and work on that for the rest of his days. I've always loved animation and I've always wanted to be able to create my own ideas and bring them to life. So that's why after fighting, I'm gonna have my own production company. After high school graduation, Israel knew he needed to somehow get out of his small town. After trading one small town for another and moving from Rotorua to Wanganui, 
he enrolled in a Bachelor's of Science in Computer Design at the Universal College of Learning in Wanganui. I went to design school to study animation just because I wanted to be able to create. But to be honest, I went there too early because I wasn't mature enough. Originally, Israel wanted to be a dancer, but his parents would not support that. Instead, they wanted him to be well-educated and earn himself a degree in one of the noble professions. And although a bachelor's degree in computer design is quite honorable, Israel had other plans. At the age of 18, he started training in kickboxing after being inspired by the Muay Thai film Ong Bak. I found uh, you know, Ong Bak, the Tony Jaa film, 2008, and I was about 18. And I was like, yo, this is cool. I don't know what this is. And then I found out it was Muay Thai. I found a Muay Thai gym. And then six weeks later, I had my first fight. Trained by Derek Broughton in Wanganui, Izzy began fighting in 2008. He went on to amass an amateur record of 32-0 before turning professional and fighting in China. In 2010, at age 21, he moved to Auckland where he began a professional kickboxing career under Eugene Behrman at City Kickboxing with UFC fighters Dan Hooker, Kai Kara France, and current UFC featherweight champion Alexander Volkanovsky. Israel's professional success wasn't overnight, however. Izzy even admitted his coach Eugene Behrman from City Kickboxing tried to convince him to try out other gyms. He wasn't up to par with the other athletes at the time. I cornered him in a fight. I didn't know who he was, but a friend asked me to help corner him, and he absolutely got his ass kicked. We shook hands and then we parted away, so I never expected to see him again. I still remember when I rolled up to the gym, and you see me, you look like you saw a ghost. Like, what are you doing here? I was like, I came to train. So when he walked in, I was really surprised. When he said he wanted to train, my last memory of him was him getting his ass kicked. So Yeah, I got my ass kicked. All right, next question, whatever. <laughs> in May 2010, Israel won the first fight of his seven-fight winning streak, defeating Tim Antonio by unanimous decision. After that, he won his next six fights, fighting almost exclusively with Wu Lin Feng, a martial arts competition televised by Hanan Television in China. His winning streak earned him a place in the 2014 Kunlun Fight 80 Kilogram Tournament, a tournament for a kickboxing promotion headquartered in Beijing, China, and it was held during Kunlun Fight 2 on February 16, 2014. He would go on to lose the semifinal bout against Simon Marcus. by an extra round split decision. Afterward, Israel made his glory debut at Glory 15 held in Istanbul. For those who don't know about Glory, it's an international kickboxing promotion based in Singapore. It is one of the largest kickboxing promotion companies globally and features some of the highest level fighters in the sport for Israel's debut match, he faced Philippe Verlinden, who won the fight by unanimous decision. They fought a rematch at Glory of Heroes 3, three months after their first fight with Israel making a deciding comeback and winning with a unanimous decision. He's the only guy that ever beat me in, um, in any fight. And he beat me with experience and with um, a good game plan. All about mindset. Believe in whatever you want to do, you can do it. I promise. After that, he participated in the King in the Ring Cruiserweights 2 tournament of the regional circuit in New Zealand where eight cruiserweights will do battle in a knockout format to crown a champion. Before the tournament, Israel said, I feel like the favorite. I feel like the guy to beat because all the guys want to beat me. I feel ready. He wasn't kidding when he said that, and his performance in the competition proved that emphatically. 
He beat Slava Alexajcik by unanimous decision in the quarterfinal. And Paddy Afoa by knockout in the semifinal. He won the tournament by knocking out Jamie Eads. This would bring his career to new heights he could only dream of. Six months later, he was able to take part in the 2015 Cruiserweights 3 tournament. He scored technical knockouts of extreme Muay Thai trained fighter Kim Loudon in the quarterfinal. And Australian based English fighter Mark Timms in the semi final bout, before winning the tournament for the second time with a first round knockout of Paddy Afoa again. Paddy Afoa got knocked out twice by Israel Adesanya, and the second time happened only 63 seconds into the bout. The only questions left regarding young Izzy after this performance was, how far can he really take this? Israel decided to move up in weight, and participated in the 2015 The Heavyweights 3. Before facing Jamie Eads in the finals, he defeated Nasi Foai by TKO in the quarterfinal. And Dan Roberts by KO in the semifinal. These two fighters had previously met in the final of the 2014 Cruiserweight Tournament. And as you would expect, Israel won this tournament final bout by unanimous decision. Israel won five of his next six fights, including victories over Yushri Belgarwi and Bogdan Stoika. In the 2016 Glory Middleweight Contender Tournament, Israel defeated Robert Thomas by unanimous decision in the semifinals and won the tournament with a split decision victory over Yushri Belgarwi. City Kickboxing, Eugene Behrman, he's my, my trainer, he's the artist, I'm just a canvas and they have put the work into me and I'm telling you man, they're not ready for me. He went on to fight Jason Wilness for the Glory Middleweight Championship at Glory 37 in Los Angeles. Wilness won the fight by unanimous decision, although the result was considered controversial. However, his unfortunate loss came at the hands of future Glory middleweight champion Alex Pereira, who won by unanimous decision. Alex Pereira was the most challenging fight Israel had during his professional kickboxing days. He just couldn't beat the guy. You could say that Alex Pereira has Israel's number, at least in kickboxing. The two fighters met during Israel's kickboxing career. Their first meeting was at Glory of Heroes 1 in 2016, with Pereira outworking Israel to earn a unanimous decision victory after three rounds. This was probably the worst thing that could happen to Israel considering that Pereira brought an end to his winning streak at the time. Still, this was nothing compared to his humiliation when they would soon rematch. A year later, the rematch took place at Glory of Heroes 7, which also happened to be Israel's last kickboxing fight. The first round was very intense, with Israel scoring a standing knockdown and nearly finishing Pereira. However, the Brazilian rallied in the second round. 40 seconds in, a cross, followed by his signature left hook, brought Israel down. And as he lay dazed, Pereira bent down to scream victoriously in his face. Fighters get knocked out all the time, but what made this all the more humiliating for Izzy is that he required oxygen as he struggled to regain consciousness instantly. Alex Pereira's claim to fame, great story behind him, which is just that he defeated Israel Adesanya in kickboxing, knocked him out, and this is a real sore subject for Izzy, and I get it. What did you get hit with? I was southpaw, was a, a left hook from him. 
he was yeah. hurt. He was out on his feet already. So it's a good story for him, you know, like he knocked me out at the third round after he got rocked in the second round. This was a man who had 74 wins to his name and only lost four times by decision. Then all of a sudden, in what was supposed to be his redemption fight, boom, lights out. Pereira made him tip the line between life and death. After his last kickboxing match against Alex Pereira, Israel decided that it was time to move on to something different. This marked the beginning of his professional mixed martial arts career. He debuted in 2012 with a TKO win against James Griffiths. Then he scored another TKO win against John Vink before taking a two-year hiatus from MMA. After his hiatus, he returned to MMA in August 2015 when he won a fight against Song Kanan by TKO. He went on to amass an 8-0 record, mainly fighting in Ocean and Chinese circuits. During this run, he won the AFC Middleweight Championship at Australia Fighting Championship 20 with a first-round TKO over Melvin Gillard. and the Hex Fight Series Middleweight Championship with a first-round KO of Stuart Dare. His flawless striking and slick movements landed him a deal with none other than Dana White. In December 2017, it was finally declared that Israel had signed a contract with the UFC. History was made. The world-class tactician would soon dominate the middleweight division. Israel debuted against Rob Wilkinson on February 11, 2018 at UFC 221. The fight was termed a New Zealand versus Australia middleweight battle. Well, I'm always fascinated by elite specialists that make their way into MMA. This match came when Israel was at the top of his game in his MMA career. Before this fight, he held a perfect 11-0 record in mixed martial arts. Compared to him, his opponent signed with the UFC after racking up an 11-0 record on the regional scene, going the distance only once as an MMA fighter. He didn't have an easy time with Rob Wilkinson's takedown attempts, all 16 of them. Nice job with the trip. Wilkinson figured to have a grappling advantage tonight. Yeah, he was really good with the takedowns, but then every time he took me down, boop, got back up. Again, spring back up, and by the third time, I started stuffing his takedowns, and then I could see like that look in his eyes, that panic. Oh, a beautiful job with the roll. I want to know what it's like to fight someone, even without static, and still be able to just take them out with that killer instinct. Now he's starting to take Wilkinson apart with the strikes. That hurt him. Not sure how much more Wilkinson can take. Breathe, brother, breathe. Just focus on your breathing. I slow cooked him in the first. Fried him in a second. Five minutes down, potentially ten to go here. He got things done relatively quickly with his hands and knees, showing glimpses of his incredible striking pedigree. I just want to touch them enough times and I know they'll fall. Israel pulled off an amazing performance for his debut match, winning the fight via technical knockout in the second round. This win earned him the performance of the night bonus. He managed to keep his MMA record unblemished in his UFC debut. Middleweights, I'm the new dog in the yard, and I just pissed all over this cage. Uh, after the fight, you kind of gave an action walking around like you're peen. Like a dominant dog walk, walks into a dog park, head high, tail high, and just kind of like pees all over the place just to mark his territory and let them know that's my spot. I smile at everyone because I'm a nice guy. But then they just take my, 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 my smiles and my kindness for weakness. Don't ever mistake that. Don't ever play yourself or you get played. His next fight took place on April 14th, 2018 against Marvin Vittori. Marvin was very confident that he would win the fight and tweeted, 
There's an Australian bum loudmouth. He thinks he's battle tested. I would love to give him his first loss. Israel couldn't find the finishing blow. With the two fighters ending the contest on their feet, two of the three judges awarded the fight to Israel, who took home the split decision win. Israel then faced Brad Tavares on July 6, 2018, at the Ultimate Fighter 27 finale. This is uh, my first main event, my first fight in Vegas, so you know, it's a lot of boxes to tick. Definitely still in the show. I brought my ski mask with me. They're like, man, did you see what Styles did this weekend? He's only here because of me. I might be in the blue corner, but I'm the A side of this. It's one of two things. Either one, he's extremely delusional, or two, he's just one of those guys that needs to like look at himself in the mirror and say, hey, you're the man. Am I lying? Be honest, just, I mean, am I lying? He has his kickboxing credentials. Um, he's made a name for himself there. But as far as MMA goes, he's fought nobody. I'm still a rising star. Just me, Brad, and the referee, I'm gonna work him. Tomorrow, I get the strap. Israel landed some crazy strikes on Tavares from a close elbow that opened up Tavares's eyelid to a body kick that would have literally killed Donald Cerrone. There was, there was some talk about Adesanya, this being a little bit too early for him to face a quality opponent like Tavares. It didn't seem that way no. in practice tonight. In between, he landed a ridiculous number of clean punches and kicks all over Tavares's battered and bruised body. Israel Adesanya just came out here and blew him out of the water. His striking is a joy to watch. Yo, I'm coming for war. I can go five rounds, but I just want to touch him. You know, I don't have to get the finish. I was having fun. Somehow, the Hawaiian Terminator survived all 25 minutes and got $50,000 towards his rehab. Islanders, man, they're tough. Hard to drop, but um, yeah, I'm happy with it. On the other hand, Israel got an extra 50000 for his violence dancing. My first main event, it's only my third fight. I'm just getting warmed up. Three fights, six months. I put my foot on the gas, and I've just been working. We're ready to face the top five, the top ten straight away. I want to fight the guys that are ranked above me. I just want to fight the best. Next on his list of opponents was Derek Brunson, who he faced on November 3rd, 2018 at UFC 230. I'm about to get paid, bitch. 50 G's for the knockout win. Face down, ass up. I would own him without his consent as a man. You describe what's going on between you and Israel. It does not seem like you two are the best of friends. It's all a show. It's all an act. He's a, he's trying to do the you know Connor Hype thing. Derek Brunson, number six in the world, taking on the ninth ranked Israel Adesanya. Israel, you're skinny, bro. Bring that chin on the platter, and I'll clean it off as well. The fight represented another big step up in the middleweight division for Israel. Adesanya as he displayed suitable takedown defense. Physically, Adesanya is not the most imposing guy in the world. He wins by technique Skill. and style. Derek Brunson is so strong. Brunson unofficially 0 for 4 on his takedown attempts thus far. Just relax, breathe. Just a lot of guys don't know how to control their chakra, their butterflies. So you just got to breathe, relax, and experience. Grab his shorts twice. Look at this. Look at that. My man trying to tear off my pints. You want to tear off my pints? Huh? This guy, and look at his face. Oh, what did I do, Ref? Look at his face. So Adesanya flips Brunson the bird after Brunson. If you, on your first exchange, first thing he does is grab my shorts blatantly. Look at this lying ass. Why the fuck you lying? Yeah. And I kind of side looked or felt like, did Herb see that? You know, he didn't see that, all right. And the second time was so blatant, I was like, what the fuck, dude, come on. If he's doing that so early on, you know he wasn't ready, you know he wasn't prepared. Caught you in 4K, bitch. If you could send Israel one message, what would it be? I hope the hype was fine, because now the hype is over. 
unleashing his incredible striking against an outmatched Derek Brunson. Here comes the big shot. Boom, and that's what we called earlier. We are saying if he keeps reaching in like that, a knee is coming. Most times I'm always up here, so I've had to practice just bringing my energy down. That's what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. That's technique. Oh! That's the last style bender, folks. The barrage left Brunson stumbling, and the fight was called off in the first round. You know, I just, I've been doing this for a long time, since 2008, so I'm not, I'm not new at this. And so everyone that's picking against me, I can understand, you know, I forgive you. You don't know what you do, you know. This was like a walk in the park. No, no, this was a walk in the garden. Madison, baby. With Adesanya picking up his fourth UFC win of 2018 and third performance of the night award. This is four fights in the UFC in under 11 or 10 months. Four fights in 2018, four wins, I'm the only one. So yeah, achievement unlocked. I keep saying, man, I don't throw in hope. I aim and fire, down the barrel. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. When 2019 began, Israel was the number six ranked fighter in the official UFC middleweight rankings. And most people still considered him to be a work in progress. However, this didn't slow him down. I've always known who I am, but like I've just, when you have the world trying to shit on you and tell you to be like them, I'm like, why? I, look, I'm unlike anyone I've ever met. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's my ego talking or whatever, but I've never met anyone like me as he faced former UFC middleweight champion Anderson Silva on February 10th, 2019 in the main event of UFC 234. You get compared like to Silva a lot. That's They've been good. doing that since my first fight. I was like, just give it time. Those comparisons will fade away. And they did, especially after I fought him. I'm a fan of this man, but just because I'm a fan doesn't mean you can't catch these hands and elbow and feet and knee. Israel lived a dream when he went blow for blow with the MMA legend. Me and him are playing this game, so when I hit him, I didn't hit him clean. I'm not trying to hit him where he is. I'm trying to hit him where he's going to be. But then he knows that as well. So he'd anticipate that and then pause. There's a Ooh. time I kicked him in the face and I slowed it down on my Instagram. This is where I'm just like my toe. So it looked cool. But I was like, I didn't hit him clean. And I went, she's close. Because I felt it. Yeah. I felt my toe nick. And mm. he goes, I'd like to see Anderson get his hands up and get the pressure going. So whenever I'd like faint him or right. make him react, he'd like trap your hands, come through 52 blocks. I'm the guy that takes risks. A lot of these guys are too pussy. They don't take risks. They're too safe. They play the game safe. Like when he tripped me, I was getting up and in my head. I was like, okay, here come that flying knee. And then whoop, I did like literally I pressed eject. I was like, get the fuck out of Dodge. You versus Anderson was a beautiful fight to watch. It was two artists in there yes. creating a masterpiece. Yes. There was one moment and it was in the third round and he went to the, he's like, come on, puts his back against the fence. Like, I'm gonna wait too. And it was maybe like seven seconds, but just a split second in there that I was just like, holy shit, I'm fighting Anderson Silva. This is my time and I beckoned, I was like, nice, no, right here. Then he came to the center of the cage. I believe what we're talking about when we talk about youth versus age is we're talking about speed. One great thing that we did see from Anderson in a way that he really represented himself well tonight, he represented himself and pushed what we all believe to be the future champion. Final 10 seconds of the fight. What a striking match turned in by Israel Adesanya and Anderson Silva. And so much respect from one man to another. Then he got the end that he was hoping for with a unanimous decision victory, outpointing Silva on all three scorecards, keeping Israel's perfect MMA record intact. Anderson, thank you. Obrigado, my friend. You've been doing this for a long time, and I appreciate you. you know?
I mean, the first round was ridiculous. I mean, Anderson said he always wants to fight the mirror image of himself. Well, he got it tonight, and you saw that in the first round. I had fun in there. Like I said, I would, and I showed off. He's a good dance partner, so I feel like the fight of the night was well-deserved. God damn, I would have loved to see that fight when Anderson was 10 years younger and yep. you, are, you are at where you're at right now. I'll tell yeah. you how it goes. How's it go? Same way it went. Like Roy Jones said, y'all must have forgot. You don't know who that man over there, Anderson Silva. All of, a lot of you new fans weren't around during his reign. He brought me into this game, you know? This guy inspired me to, to believe, like, a skinny black guy can just come in here and fuck everyone up. With such a spectacular UFC career and a very impressive winning streak, Israel decided it was time to start challenging for the UFC middleweight championship title. Kelvin, put that belt down. Seriously. Momentum. Momentum is a powerful force. You know, keeps on rolling. And April 13th, I'm going to roll over Kelvin. And I've seen these kinds of contenders come and go. A lot of hype train behind them. A couple years later, they're not with the organization anymore. Who wants to see a fight? You're going to see a nasty whooping. Let's go! He faced Kelvin Gastelum for the interim UFC middleweight championship on April 13, 2019, in the co-main event of UFC 236. The fight between Gastelum and Israel was widely regarded as the best fight of that year. The five-round battle had everything a fan could ask for in an MMA contest. There were shifts in momentum, power strikes versus volume strikes, pressure, knockdowns, and an overabundance of heart and grit. It looked like Gastelum had the momentum going into the final stanza as he had Adesanya hurt in the last minute of the fourth round. When Adesanya went back to his corner, the UFC commenters remarked on how badly he had been damaged. That is the most hurt we've ever seen Israel Adesanya for sure to fight. It was very close too. When the fifth round came along, all three judges had the fight scored at 38 to 38. When you entered the fifth round against yeah. Kelvin, you said, I'm ready to die. I call it Este Diablo. He was looking at me and I said, you're not gonna beat me. I'm prepared to die. With that, the bout hinged on the final five minutes. Israel's effort in the final round earned him 10 to 8 scores from all three judges and the interim title. Not only was the middleweight matchup the best fight on that April fight card, it earned the best battle of the first half of 2019 honors. If you saw that match, you can confirm that it indeed was a magnificent showdown. The fight between Gastelum and Israel was widely regarded as the best fight of that year. Receiving nominations from many MMA news outlets, the five-round contest shared fight of the night honors with the main event. Not only was the middleweight matchup the best fight on that April fight card, it earned the best battle of the first half of 2019 honors and held on to that spot, finishing the year as the best UFC fight of 2019. He then faced Robert Whitaker in a title unification bout on October 6, 2019. Headlining UFC 243 for the UFC Middleweight Championship. You know, looking at the man right there to, to your left, uh, is that the fight that you would like most? Because I imagine, yes. especially down here, it, it may be a stadium. What stadium yeah. do you have? Broad Labor, Etihad, where? We can do it. Talk to this guy. Talk to the boss. Australia has, has built into an incredible market for us, you know, as far as fans and fighters. When we had a meeting, we talked face to face. I let him know this ain't my first rodeo. I've been doing this for a long time as well. Yeah, the cat's out the bag, so I'm about to be champion 2019. 
If Gasoline can do that much work, I can. You know, I like to think I've got a better skill set than Gasoline. I think I have a better skill set than Izzy. He's just the next biggest threat, the next opponent in my way, and come fight day, either may the best man win. He does not want to let everyone down. He's in his home country. He doesn't want to let everyone down. We have to see if Izzy can stand up to that type of pressure. This is one of those cases where it's the perfect fight with the perfect guys in the perfect place at the perfect time. At the match, Israel pretended to write down the name of his opponent moments before they faced each other. A direct reference to the Japanese anime Death Note, in which a student discovers a notebook that allows the holder to kill anyone by writing the person's name on a page. Dude, that was the Death Note. I wrote his <laughs> name in the Death Note. Within round two, Shinigami got him. I touch now is the time. God bless. This is what dreams are made of, you know? You and that were the guy that wants to take what's yours. It, it, it's the best feeling in all the sports. In the first round, Adesanya will just read people. But he'll move and he'll slip and he'll read. It'll make you realize that he's the one in control of the range of the fight. He's doing everything so hard. It's that sly, slick moving out of the way. Oh. Reminding you that you're exposed and you're on his terms. I never felt in danger and I said leading up to this fight fear fear is not real danger is real and I'm a dangerous man He duly produced a second round knockout of said Reaper with a right hook to left hook combination <laughs> Consequently crowning himself as the undisputed champion Congratulations on an Thank epic you. night. What's going through your mind right now? I'm real petty, you know that, John. I remember everything like an elephant. Like I said, I was in a nosebleed, and now I made his nosebleed. The performance against Robert Whitaker was out of this world. From the entrance to the fight to the exit, Israel just did everything right. With the UFC middleweight championship belt around his waist, Israel had reached peak level in his weight division. I think Israel Adesanya can fill stadiums anywhere in the world. There's no doubt that uh, this guy's going to be a huge star. He's incredibly charismatic. He's got a fighting style that uh, is really, really interesting. All that was left for him was to defend his title. Do you know who's next? I got this overly inflated balloon animal. He better not step in here because this is my f***ing cage tonight. Just like that, all his years of practice and perfection from his amateur days had paid off. And he had proved to the world everything he already knew would happen. His first defense was against three-time UFC title challenger Yoel Romero on March 7th, 2020, UFC 248. I respect the fuck out of Adesanya because he asked for that beast. Him asking for Yoel, yes. you, everybody in the game respects that. You want to fight that fucking monster? <laughs> Even Darren Till. Darren Till said anybody but Yoel. Yoel Romero. Oh, fuck that guy. I don't want to ever fight him. He's a beast. Yeah. The challenger had a reputation as one of the toughest men in the UFC, period. If you look up Freak in the Dictionary, you see yeah. a picture of Yoel Romero flying through the air, hitting Chris Weidman with a knee. <laughs> yeah. But he never really got a chance to show why. And someone yeah. like Romero, he can take your head off like that, you know what I mean? Now he fight me. He need to prove he's the best. He wanted Romero on his resume. He got it. You wanted Romero for your next fight. This is my charity work for the year. He's coming off three <coughs> out of four losses. The people, the casuals, they think this is the guy. They think this is the guy to beat me, so I'm like, all right. Like you say, he's a beast. But there's levels to this. If you can make that look easy, it just makes you look legendary. My heart is can't be so good bad. for the long-term health. Israel evaded him for much of the contest. He picked his spots and got the job done. But it wasn't an exciting fight for the fans by any stretch of the imagination. You gotta give the judges something to score. You're getting paid for a championship fight. If a guy stands there for the first two minutes and just has his hands up. He was literally standing there yeah. at the beginning of the fight. Am I supposed to risk my belt and get clipped by him? Which I did. Right, the moment Izzy got in the range, he got yeah. stuck. I mean, that was crazy. 
So Romero is an actor. He was all theatrics and trying to act like he wanted to fight. I definitely lost respect for him. What I thought was going to be, you know, a really difficult challenge to overcome. He had other plans. He got what he wanted. He got him on his resume. He beat him. And uh, on to Costa. In the past two weeks, the number of cases of COVID-19 has increased 13-fold. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. We've been closely monitoring the situation with the coronavirus. We're moving forward with all our UFC live events. We're going to adapt to these unprecedented circumstances. Fight Island finally official this week. It's 10 square miles where only we exist on the island. Every fighter has their own private training facility. You know, it's going to be a very unique experience. His next title defense was against fighter Paulo Costa on September 27, 2020 at UFC 253. If anybody thinks I'm wrong, raise your hand right now and we can talk about it. The Costa fight's going to be insane. Costa will come forward. He will throw big punches. He will throw combinations. He will not stop punching, and Israel Adesanya is going to have to fight him. Costa versus Adesanya will be a ridiculous fight. I guarantee it. Costa is very, very, very dangerous. He's got outstanding striking. He's got real power, and he's fast. But with Paulo Costa, do you think there's any chance that he doesn't come forward? He's too dumb. Even when he fought Yoramura, Yoramura pointed at the ground, and he looked at the ground, and they go struck. Like, he's just such a ignoramus buffoonus. Adesanya is nothing. Adesanya is the most shameful champion. Paulo started talking. He's a shameful champion. I'm going to kill him. I will make him cry. And I was like, bet. Watch this. This marked the first time two male, unbeaten mixed martial artists met in a title fight since 2009. Paulo Costa's winning streak was not one of fabrication. With wins over Uriah Hall. Oh. Coming off an intense Yol Romero win, Costa seemed the perfect contender. I have a gift for you. Oh, I'm gonna knock your ass out, bitch. bitch. His massive frame and power was thought to be a big part in this matchup. But as McGregor once said, Precision beats power, and timing beats speed. Only one of them managed to keep their winning streak alive. The consensus greatest two middleweights in the world at present, Paolo Costa and Israel Adesanya. Adesanya put in good work on that lead leg of Costa. Some early leg attacks for Israel Adesanya. His poker face wasn't enough. Costa going hands behind his back. Yeah, this is not looking good for Paolo Costa. He's getting picked apart here in this fight. Oh! And it looked like that head kick opened up a cut in and around that right eyebrow of Costa. My skinny shins sliced him open like a katana blade. Israel retained his middleweight belt with an absolute master class against his Brazilian challenger, delivering a punishing TKO in the second round. There's that slide back left hand right off the temple, drops him, and Israel goes in for the kill. Costa trying to That is it! Still Mate, when you bend Costa over, Stop. like, Jesus, like, mm. I'm the big dog in the yard now, so what does the big dog do when it wants to show dominance? Just, you know, let him know, double tap. And still! I told you, he's dumb. I'm smart. I understand this fucking game. This was my 100th win. Adesanya put on a clinic, absolutely dismantled him, and easily won the fight. That's all I care about is fighting. This is just nice because, you know, cheddar makes it better. I just keep doing what I'm doing, and my legacy will be cemented in time. On March 6, 2021, Israel moved up a weight class and attempted to become a two-weight champion by facing Jan Blahovich for the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship, headlining UFC 259. The thing that I respect and that I love about Israel and what he's doing is he doesn't want to just be the middleweight champion. He doesn't want to just be the light heavyweight champion. He wants to be great. What I've always uh, predicted to do in this game is change the game, change history. 
And I came in here just, just over three years ago, and look what I've done so far. And I got a long way to go. Though Israel was five pounds away from the light heavyweight limit, he still went ahead with the fight. Kyle Bender, he usually fights at 185. Yeah. He weighed in for this fight at it was like 200.5, and the weight limit is 205. Bohovich weighed 205, but not really. I would imagine Bohovich is walking around at least 225. If Israel wins, you know, everybody's going to be talking about, oh my God, does he fight John Jones? And if Jan wins, everybody will know who he is and be talking about him on Sunday. He is just dripping with confidence. I think he's a hard fight for Izzy. I also think he's a tremendously tough fight for Jan Bohovic. You know, both of them have got a really tough fight on their hands. You know, for Stylebender, it's all about technique and setup. Oh, Ooh. that's when it's a problem. Oh, look at that. Oh, beautiful take. Beautiful down. double leg by Jan Bohovic. Got through the position and got big. Felt like if he could stay heavy on top of Adesanya, he could change the complexion of this fight. And lost by a unanimous decision, making this the first time he had been defeated in mixed martial arts. His famous undefeated record was no more. Israel Adesanya, with no experience and grossly undersized, just went 25 minutes with Jan Bohovic. That is 23 minutes more than Dominic Reyes went with Jan Blachowicz. And it is four rounds more than former world champion Luke Rockhold went with Jan Blachowicz. Listen, he's the middleweight champ. He doesn't get the light heavyweight title. He doesn't fight John Jones. But you know what? You can never hurt somebody for, for thinking big and, and, and trying to become great. You know, he gave it a shot tonight and didn't happen. Going back down to 185 and I'm going to roll that with my iron black fist. However, it didn't stop the hype train, and certainly didn't stop Izzy's domination over his own division. And to yourself, what do you have to do to be cemented as the greatest UFC middleweight of all time surpassing Anderson Silva? Keep doing what I'm doing. That's what got me to the dance. Coming back to the middleweight division, he rematched Marvin Vittori for the UFC middleweight championship. Don't touch him. On June 12th, 2021, at UFC 263. Let's go. He said he wanted October. Robert said he wanted September. And I said, I'm the king. Who wants June? I'm the champion and you ain't, bitch. Fight me now, bitch. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Do it again. That's called roid rage. I want to look through his soul and just, like, tame this motherfucker. Like, that's what I want to do. I want to eat him alive. I'm going for 5 nil because I wanted to to realize from belt to belt that he's going to be in hell. I'm going to become the first Italian UFC champion no matter what, at any cost. Pressure isn't for everyone. I'm acquired to this taste. He saw me. I didn't even get up when he stood up because I knew it wasn't a threat. Though their first match was a close one, Israel managed to control most of the fight. Look at this uppercut. He's really chopping those legs up. That's going to be a problem. Oh, the with the kick. Look at that. Oof. That's the feint, and then delivers the low kick. Nice kick. Oh. Winning via unanimous decision. One of our boys, one of the, the guys that was on his way up to the UFC got murdered. Paul Bunky, I love you, man. This fight I dedicate to you, Paul. The old Mozzie, my arch nemesis, Bobby Knuckles. We need to run that back in Auckland. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. This match was followed by a rematch between Adesanya and Robert Whitaker for the championship title eight months later at UFC 271. This guy ran through everyone till he ran into me. He's a phenomenal fighter. I couldn't beat him the first time, and uh, I've had to put in a lot of work to try and, and, and give him another run. Uh, one of the things I learned is tricky to hit. <laughs> I'll tell you that much, is a pain to hit. 
for me, it's just, it's, it's about staying excited, staying in it, staying in it. So I think with this guy right here, the way he fought last time, he brought the fight. And everyone knows, if you bring the fight, I will fight. In both fights, we witnessed Israel come up against the absolute best middleweight fighters on the planet. Both who had already felt his presence in the octagon. Despite having already experienced Israel's craft years prior, Izzy proved once again his skills are just too elite even against the best of the best. Adesanya right now has gotten really comfortable with the stand-up. Oh! Whitaker Corner calling for a little bit of self-belief at this point. He fights at range, and he does the same kinds of things that he always does. It's complicated, it's hard to decipher, it catches Robert Whitaker clean through the course of five rounds at times. Nice connection there with the left by Whitaker. That's what Robert was doing in the first fight, kind of lunging in a little bit like that. Any confidence, I mean, which is a scary thought. Israel is one of the most confident people on the planet, but for a good reason. He backs it up, he's not all talk. The champion of the world, incredibly dominant. He slew the Reaper again, winning via unanimous decision. We're just two guys trying to be the best in the world, but tonight I'm the best in the world. I wasn't really looking past Robert, I took him very seriously. The division's filled with killers, it's filled with killers, but I'm looking forward to fresh meat. This all happened after his loss. Israel's UFC career has been a series of incredible fights, and though his loss has tainted his MMA record, he is still regarded as one of the best fighters in the MMA world. He's even ranked number two in the UFC men's pound-for-pound -pound rankings as of February 14th, 2022, and has an MMA record of 22 to 1. Now, I know what you're thinking. We know how this story goes. Pure domination in his division until he's out of his prime. Then the losses come in, or retirement strikes. However, perhaps one of the most interesting arcs in his career is coming up. The storm isn't over as his nemesis joins the UFC middleweight division. Alex Pereira, the man who retired Israel from kickboxing, the man who outclassed them in their first matchup, the man who knocked his lights out in the second. Pereira signed with the UFC on September 3, 2021. UFC fans knew what was coming. The only question stood was, is Alex really up to par with MMA? Can the famous kickboxer handle the ground game? Well, these questions were soon shut out after his debut performance against Andreas Mihailidis and his most recent bout against Bruno Silva, both fights ending in pure dominance and victory for Alex Pereira. He has since made it clear that his goal is to capture the UFC middleweight title currently held by Israel. On the other hand, Israel is already plotting a revenge mission against the only man to knock him out. He said, First round, I, I teed him up. Second round, I rocked him. But then, I let some bullshit get to me. People in your life say, oh man, guess you shouldn't leave it in the Dutch's hands. I was only throwing right hands. I just threw only right hands at him. And I watched that fight back. Now, I haven't watched it in a long time, but when I watched it back, I was like, why are you doing this? Because that's not me staying true to myself. If he makes his way to the UFC, he can get it. Anytime. Hey, if we fight again, I'll fuck him up. 100%. For Israel Adesanya, his belt was all the proof he needed to show his skills were levels beyond anything the division could have in store for him. But with Pereira's UFC dominance emerging, given all the significant history between the two men, the question now stands. Will the style bender rise or fall in the biggest voyage soon to set sail?